history books long after all of us are gone. Now, I'd like to go back to John Roberts in Nashville. John, there's uh, been a lot of speculation around this table tonight and elsewhere. Well, what would Vice President Gore likely do now? Leslie Stahl has some ideas, which you'll hear about in a minute. But first, let's hear yours. Well, uh, as he told a town hall meeting uh, a little while ago when asked what he would do if he didn't win the presidency, he, he didn't want to entertain the idea of, of losing the election tonight. But he said, uh, I was a journalist, I was an investigative journalist, I was a journalist when I was in Vietnam for a couple of years. So if I was to choose something to do, it would probably be to write. Uh, Gore uh, likes to write all of his own speeches. Uh, he wrote uh, probably 99.9% of the acceptance speech that he gave at the Democratic Convention back on August 17th. And I would imagine that he's probably written tonight's speech as well. We were expecting that he would be up on uh, on the stage by now here at the War Memorial Plaza, but there's been a bit of a delay. Uh, Mr. Gore apparently has asked for a teleprompter, uh, e either that or he's managed to find 12,000 votes in Florida. Uh, but uh, I think the teleprompter is probably the way that, uh, that we're going to go here tonight. And uh, he's probably crafted a, a, a concession speech that isn't just going to say uh, it was a hard-fought race. Uh, congratulations to everybody and congratulations to Governor Bush. Uh, it will probably be uh, some sort of uh, uh, soaring oratory, if Al Gore can be said to have soaring oratory, on uh, the entire uh, campaign, the, the state of politics in America, his vision for the future and, and what he tried to do here in uh, Tennessee tonight, Dan. John Roberts uh, mentioning the teleprompter. It may or may not be that the vice president wants to teleprompter up. Uh, no one would doubt that. Uh, George Bush uh, used the teleprompter extensively and regularly during the campaign. It's become a regular for candidates. One of the things we didn't do in television was so often show uh, how often the candidates use the teleprompter. And George Bush is one. He was smart to do so. But many times you have just out in the audience, uh, you can see sort of two glass things and what they are are the teleprompter. In recent years, uh, I would say since at least the 1980 campaign, uh, that the candidates of both parties have used teleprompters, particularly when it's an important speech, like a, uh, an acceptance speech or a victory speech, or uh, a, in this case, a concession speech. So no points away from Al Gore for waiting a minute or two for the teleprompter, if indeed uh, that's what he's waiting on. We have no way of knowing for sure that that's the case. Let's just start, you had a thought about what Al Gore might do. Before you do it, I do want to say that John Roberts said that Al Gore spent a couple of years uh, as uh, an, an army reporter uh, in Vietnam. He did spend uh, some time in the army as a reporter. But just for the record, he didn't spend two years in Vietnam. He spent less than a year there. Giving credit, he volunteered, he went. Now, your thought about what he might do? Well, you know, there is a presidency that's open right now, and that is the president of Harvard University. And I've been told there have actually been some feelers out to Gore, and I would not be surprised if he accepted, if he were asked. Uh, it's something, I have a vague memory. Do any of you remember that President Clinton may have mentioned something about how Gore would have been a wonderful college president? <laughs> At one point, somebody said that. Under the heading of Dammy with faint praise. Well, <laughs> would not be a bad line of work being president wonderful. of Harvard University. And also, just to make sure in the record, I said that Al Gore volunteered for Vietnam. I think, in fact, that what he said was, I went into the Army because uh, if I didn't get drafted, somebody else would have been what drafted. Nonetheless, just to clear it up, because Al Gore deserves that. He, he went to Vietnam when he could have, as so many others did, uh, avoid going, but he did go. The only thing I wanted to do was clear up about how long he had been there. Uh, Bob Schieffer, so close, so agonizing close. Mighta, coulda, Shoulda, woulda, woulda. <laughs> woulda. Going to be so much talk of that when I just I'm still stunned with this one fifth of one percent. Well, ten thousand eight hundred votes out of almost six million cast in Florida. That put Florida for uh, George Bush and tipped over the Electoral College for him. Well, I mean that's why, Dan. I think you can't say what it was that won for uh, for George Bush any more than you can say what it was that lost for Al Gore. Maybe 11,000 people got sick and weren't able to go to vote. I mean, when it's this close, it's impossible to say. But you know, I'll tell you something else. While we're just sitting here waiting for Al Gore, uh, George Bush is going to be reminded every day of his life in Washington of this night because he's going to be dealing with a Senate that will include not only Joe Lieberman, but also Hillary Rodham Clinton. So he'll have a reminder of uh, what all happened uh, on this very night. Well, this is the way it looks at this moment. 271 at least for George Bush. 270 needed to win in the Electoral College. Florida did it for him. Uh, Gore has at least 249. Wisconsin with 11 is still out. 
Oregon with seven is still out. The national vote total so breathtakingly close. Uh, this is how the map looks in 48% to 48%, about a, what, uh, maybe a 300 vote difference, 300,000 vote difference. Uh, very, very close. One of the closest elections in all United States history. And for whatever it may be worth, I think not very much, uh, every Republican ticket for a quarter of a century has had either a Bush or a Dole on the ticket. Dole with uh, Gerald Ford in 1976, uh, Bush with Reagan twice in the 1980s, and then Bush in 1988, uh, they Bush, George Bush the Elder again in 1992, uh, uh, Dole in 96 and now again in 2000 uh, George Bush and while part of the American dream is to say uh, anyone can aspire to be president in this country and have the dream for alive uh, George Bush isn't going to get very far with this is one reason he never raises it but you know there's also a burden to be carried that if you're the son of a famous person a president of the United States it's not that easy to get your stuff together and say I'm going to try to follow in the footsteps of my father Yes, it has been done before in the case of the Adamses, uh, but not an easy thing to do. And among the things you have to give George Bush credit for is that, yes, he had a lot of advantages, went to prep school at one of those fancy places, then went on to Yale, then went on to Harvard, but he also had the burden of the name. You can argue that it was a positive, but also it was something he had to overcome. Bob Schieffer. Well, I mean, the fact that he's only the second son of a president to be elected president tells you having a dad who's president uh, doesn't make it that much easier to get elected president. So I think you have to give him credit for it. I mean, uh, this is a remarkable thing that's happened tonight. And uh, under the headline of, of assuming nothing, that the only other time it happened was in the case of the Adamses. Mm -hmm. uh, you had uh, Adams. Uh, who followed George Washington, mm -hmm. then uh, John Quincy Adams, uh, which come, came later uh, in the 1820s. The only other time uh, that it's ever happened. We're waiting here now for Vice President Gore to make his concession speech uh, there in Tennessee, and then waiting to hear from the victorious George Bush. While we uh, wait, there's some of uh, well, the crowd uh, stirring a bit, but it may be because the camera's on them. Ed Bradley, you had something you wanted to add here. Well, I think there's there's some, perhaps they're getting these stories that they're looking at Florida again, because it, it seems that the margin keeps coming down. Uh, but, you know, I think if there's anyone who's happier than George W. Bush tonight, it has to be his father. Uh, I've, I talked to people who talked with him in the last week leading up to this election, and he was said to be just beside himself and feeling that if his son lost this race, how terrible it would be, not just for him, but for his son. And I think he has to feel some sense of redemption since these are the people he lost to. And his son has, re, uh, you know, has reclaimed the name and reclaimed the White House. He's got to be feeling very good tonight. As we await uh, Vice President Gore's appearance and his concession speech, uh, we now believe that the margin in Florida has grown even smaller. You might have been saying to yourself, uh, that's not likely or even possible. You might have been saying that to yourself and you would have been wrong. Let's punch up the Florida board here for just uh, one moment. Now the margin in Florida is down to, who oh boy, what, mm -hmm. maybe 10,000 plus votes. Uh, is sunk but we down think it might go even smaller even than this it thing. It looks like it's going to go even smaller than that. But, you know, I can trump that with Wisconsin for the moment. Let's punch up the Wisconsin board here. Presidential race. 11 electoral votes. Here you are. What? <laughs> Do the arithmetic for me. A, a few hundred votes separating oh these two people uh, in Wisconsin. And it isn't over yet with Ralph Nader getting 4%. About 1,200 votes is the difference between Gore and Bush in Wisconsin. This is with 95% of the precincts reporting. Either one of the two lead candidates could take this. Uh, Ralph Nader, uh, the Gore people are going to argue, and with some, at least some validity, that Nader was the spoiler in this race, as he uh, may have been in places like Iowa, and for that matter, even Florida. Ed you Bradley. Know, uh, they say it's not over till it's over. The Associated Press is reporting that the lead in Florida for Governor Bush has dwindled to about 6,000 and that a small percentage of the vote has yet to be reported in several counties, including two predominantly Democratic counties. Uh, the Associated Press believes that the uncounted votes in Broward and Palm Beach counties 
could allow a change of the lead oh my word. in the Florida vote. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, 911, cardiac arrest unit, please. Let's don't joke about it, folks. Uh, you have known all night long, and we have said to you all night long, that uh, these estimates of who wins and who loses are best uh, based on the best available information that we have. Uh, CBS News has the best track record in the business over a half century plus for accuracy on election night, but nobody's perfect. Now, what the Associated Press is reporting, uh, a very reliable news service, is it's down to a 6,000 vote margin for uh, Bush in Florida with still some votes out and votes out in areas that could, could go to Al Gore. This sets aside the whole question of absentee ballots from overseas. So rather than waiting on the teleprompter there in Nashville, mm -hmm. Tennessee, uh, Al Gore may be on the phone to uh, some of his uh, leaders down in Florida saying, yeah. folks, I'm ready to make this concession speech, but you know, I don't want to make it if there's any chance that we're still alive in this race. So. For those of you who went to bed or started going off to brush your teeth and come back and say, hello, what's this, Dan, rather? Well, i got to tell you, folks, A, I don't know. B, I don't know anybody who does know. What we do know is this. Florida is the state that put George Bush over the top in the electoral vote uh, column. Uh, at that time, at the time the call was made, and I don't know of anybody in television or radio who hadn't made the same call, uh, we put this data, this information precincts into computers, and then we, we make uh, judgments on whether a race is over or not. No doubt after this is over, there's going to be a lot of rethinking about how these races are called. Because w w many, many calls made tonight, all of them uh, right on the money, with the exception of this Florida situation, which one under the anchorman creed of candor when convenient, it's candid to say uh, this has been a fairly fouled up situation in Florida, but mostly because it is so nail-bitingly close. The Florida Secretary of State on the website, their website shows 2,898,865 for Bush, 2,898,235 for Gore. The Florida Secretary of State says the margin in Florida get this fo these folks and hold on to the bedstead or something, 629 votes separate Bush and Gore in Florida according to the Florida Secretary of State as reported on their website. So, uh, we're not dialing back, at least not yet. Uh, it's already happened once in Florida. The best we can tell you is this. 271 looks like the number of electoral votes that George Bush has. And that would be enough to win, since 270 required to win. But in that 271, what put him over the top was the belief that he had Florida's 25 electoral votes. Uh, now, now, Bush is. Now, with only 629 votes separating the two in actual votes counted in Florida, you can understand why suddenly there'll be some nervousness in the Bush camp and suddenly a faint, very faint glimmer of what they think is hope in the Gore camp. Because, Dan, don't forget, we haven't counted those absentee ballots that 10, came in from overseas. Am I right about that, Ed? There may be 10,000 of them. There were 10, 000, requests for 10,000 absentee ballots. We don't know how many are going to come back. But certainly there's probably 629 out there. This is not to say that Wisconsin and Oregon can't still figure in this equation. Wisconsin with 11 electoral votes, Nader a factor. Oregon with seven, Nader a factor. But uh, you will see on our map, Florida is blinking red among the, anything that blinks here means it's a state was carried by uh, Clinton and Gore in 1996. Yes, very early in the evening, it was colored blue for Gore at a time uh, when everybody in the, let's call the state's business, thought it was gonna go for Gore. Then it was pulled back to undecided. Then with a late surge by Bush in the actual votes counted, it went into the red column for Bush and hallelujah, over the top for Bush was the reporting. Now, stunningly, only 629 votes separate the two candidates among votes in and counted in Florida. And if Florida should switch the other way, Gore would win. Well, Dan, won't there be a demand for a recount? I mean, won't the Gore people say uh, we need a, a recount? And won't there be a call for a recount in Wisconsin where it's so close? I mean, that's generally standard procedure when it gets this this close so we may not know here until the end of the week well, well it would be a recount from either why would it just be bush if 
why wouldn't Gore ask for a recount? Well, that's what I'm saying. Won't saying. Gore ask? Well, it's no sense speculating. And folks, it's 3.30 in the morning here in the East. But the excitement level has just